Hey there, and welcome to the Business of Business podcast. Here we are two daughters and their dad seeking to inspire and educate you to follow your dreams of being in business by teaching you the business of being in business. The good, the bad, the humor are all parts of our unique perspective as an entrepreneurial family. Thanks for joining us. So grab a coffee, turn up the volume. Here we go. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the Business of Business podcast, Two Daughters and Their Dad. I am your host, Stacey J. Dempsey, and the J is very important because it's what brings the joy. We are here together once again with the dad, Jack Dempsey, and the other daughter, Jennifer Faith. Great afternoon to the two of you. Hi. Hello. hello. And welcome, everyone. Season two. In all seriousness, welcome our listeners to season two. We are super excited to be here together. We are still operating via Zoom because of all things COVID-19. So if you if we experience some technical difficulties, just bear with us. Um, but today we want to talk a little bit about the four-step process of benefits versus cost when starting a business and um, how really important following this, this four-step process can be in, in launching your business. So Jack, I want to start out with you as far as just set us off on what's, what's number one in our four-step process. Well, number one actually makes it a five-step process in many ways because, you know, number one is what's the goal? What's the business? What do you, what do you, what's your pursuit? So really, and being specific about that. So I think the first step is to really define what you're going after. Define your business and be as specific as possible. And in all of these steps, write it down. You know, I mean, again, statistics show science shows when you write something down the likelihood of it being accomplished or happening really jumps exponentially first step is just to write it down and be as specific and as descriptive as possible uh, about what your goal is your business idea your entrepreneur pursuit that would be step one and then you start the four-step process. Which a good thing is most of our listeners probably already have that figured out, right? Whether they're trying to start a business, they have someone that's been in business for a long time, maybe setting up a new goal to take their business to the next level. What's important is making sure, again, it's descriptive. You know, you really, you really write it out. You try to get into some specifics. Don't try to be too broad with the goal. Don't try to be too vague. Uh, but be very specific. This multi-step process can can be applied to a lot of different things. It can be applied to, you know, fitness goals, nutrition goals, business goals, family goals. I mean, there can be so many different applications of this. I mean, we're going to be talking about it from a business perspective. And I think the other thing is the more descriptive that you are, then you can begin to see, you know, how you start to take some smaller steps. So by describing in detail what that pursuit is, then you can begin to see, right, here's what I need to be doing in the next 30 days. And then from there, you know, you really start the process. And that's where, and we've talked about this in prior episodes, is your why. And I mean, why you really, really, and it needs to be capitalized, really want that particular business pursue that particular goal. Specific, your specific whys. Let me ask you something, Dad, because we've talked about this before. And a lot of the time, people don't know what their why is. You know, people think right off the top, your why would be family, children. So what about entrepreneurs that don't have necessarily children? What would be an example of a why, maybe your why, or some advice for people? I remember thinking that before before I had my daughter, before I had a business, question myself, like, what is my why? A why can have a monetary component to it. You know, make money, I want financial freedom. And if you have a family, it could be my why is I want to be in control of my own time so that I can pick and choose, you know, and and be with my family more potentially. 
It could be I want to be in a position to be paid for what I'm worth. Ultimately, I can pay for my children's college educations. I mean, you can tie some of those types of things into it. Now, if there is no category like that in your life, you have to be thinking about then it being still an outward why. How can what I'm doing impact someone's life? How can it impact the community? If we make our why too much about us, I think it can have a tendency to be easily dismissed. Like, well, it was my why, and maybe that's not a why for me anymore. But, you know, if my why is, you know, I want to help people march into retirement financially secure. Well, now all of a sudden, it's not about me. It's about people out there that I want to help have a comfortable retirement. Or, you know, my why could be I want to help people have the proper foundation of insurances underneath their financial plan. Trying to, again, just get outward with your why Nothing wrong with having some inward whys at all, but make sure part of it is outward, especially if you don't have those around you, like you said, kids or family that connect your why to. So the second is why. And again, why you really want to hit that goal, why you really want to start your own business. The next two uh, steps are critical. And the next one is to write down what are the benefits of you hitting your goal of you getting your business up and running and success and really again try to you know keep it you know try to get more specific you know the number of specifics greater than five but try to keep it between five and ten once you kind of get over ten you know then you're you're probably rambling a little bit but really try to get those five or ten significant benefits you know, that you are trying to uh, achieve by that pursuit. So for example, you know, it could be if you're, uh, if this is, if you're attaching this to, you know, kind of a health goal, well, your health goal could be, you know, I want, you know, I want all of my, you know, uh, blood profile readings to be within a normal range, or I want, you know, I want my blood pressure to be, you know, in a normal range. You know, you can kind of get, you know, into some specific health benefits. You want to be able to, you know, take a five-mile hike, uh, you know, without, you know, getting winded. You know, just things like that. I mean, obviously, physical fitness goals can be a, somewhat easier to attach benefits to. When you're talking about um, your business, you know, again, it could be um, leading, you know, you want to build a business that's going to have specific impact, you know, in people's lives, in your customer or client's lives. It could be, you know, you want to build a team of people around you that you're going to have impact in employees' lives. Um, so, you know, really thinking through that business, it could be, you know, financial freedom. It could be um, time freedom, you know, really listing out those benefits. Okay. And what about number four? Number four, here's the other one, because it is now you want to list out the cost. What's, what's it going to cost me to do this? Because what I find is that what some people will look at an endeavor and look at the benefits and not weigh the cost. Then they get into it and they're, they're surprised or overwhelmed by what, you know, what they have to sacrifice in order to, you know, meet their goal, hit their objectives, you know, in growing a business. Um, and then they quit. Or conversely, they don't, you know, they don't weigh the benefits and they just look at what all the costs are going to be to do it and they never get started because the costs over, you know, the potential costs overwhelm them because they didn't really think through the benefit side. But we, we want to make sure we're doing both. We want to make sure that we're doing both benefits and costs and same thing. Try to list out five things that, you know, by pursuing, you know, this business, it's going to cost you. It could be, I need to get up an hour earlier every day, or I need to, you know, work for two hours in the evening after the kids go to bed, or it could be, I need to give up, 
<clears throat> you know, spending so much time researching my fantasy football team and, you know, spending time on that. I mean, there's just, there's going to be, and, and again, depending on the goal, I mean, it could literally mean that you don't see your family. Depending on what you're going after, if it's, if it's a certain business pursuit, you might have to understand that there's going to be a period of time that you're going to have to sacrifice family time to do this. And, you know, so you've got to make sure is that, is that worth it? You know, maybe, maybe the year before, you know, you coached every one of your kids soccer teams and you did all these things with your kids that now you're saying, I can't do that. I can't do that and pursue my dream or this business. That's going to have to go. So that's big because if you don't do that, because <clears throat> that's where communication comes in, because you need to make sure you're communicating with all the stakeholders, your, your, your spouse, your kids. Hey, you know, mom, dads, you know, we're pursuing this business and that means I'm not going to be able to coach it. And that might even mean, I'm not even going to make many of your games, um, you know, so, um, you know, you just have to make sure you understand that and communicate it because I've just seen it too many times where people have, you know, have these big pursuits and they don't analyze the costs. And so there's this, I call it the law of incongruency. They now they have this incongruent life that they're pursuing this over here, but you know, they didn't weigh the cost and then a lot of times it's family costs and I'm like I'm just not feeling good about that I'm you know I'm missing my kids I'm missing being in these activities I'm missing I'm missing and you know quickly the you know the business will shrink away or that pursuit will shrink away because they just didn't think through those costs well enough so you know so it's very important that you you, you list out those those specific costs. And then the last step is then look at, you know, look at the, you know, look at those two lists, what the benefits are and what the costs are, and then ask yourself, you know, do the benefits outweigh the costs? And that's the simple question. Then you can, you know, not only can you ask it, but you should be able to answer it to say, you know, either, yes or no or maybe it's yes they outweigh them you know as long as i feel like that that's not going to be a long-term cost you know yeah i'm willing to give up you know family time for the next year to get my business off the ground but i'm not willing up to give up the next five years you know i'm not willing to give all that up <clears throat> so that's where, you know, going through, you know, that, you know, that exercise really does, does help you. Um, and so, you know, I think it's just a very simple process to work through, you know, when you're thinking about, you know, pursuing entrepreneurship, pursuing a business, um, and, you know, and you can probably add some other questions to it, but I think those are a good five starting questions. You know, again, choosing, you know, really being descriptive on what your goal or what your uh, business pursuit's going to be, getting your why, why you really want to do this, those five to 10 um, specific benefits, five to 10 specific costs, and then, you know, and then weighing them out. Yeah, this is this is great. I think the most important thing is um, what you said in the beginning was, you know, you gotta write it down. You know, oftentimes you have all these things running running through your mind, and you know you're, you're thinking about them, but you know until you put them down on paper, then you know what you can take action on. Then you, like you said, you know now you can compare the cost versus the benefits, and and it's different when things are in in black and white and. And I think also once you write it down is, you know, then you can really determine like, is this truly something I want to pursue? Am I, can I really stay committed, you know, to these goals that will eventually get me to my dream? Um, and I think it can be extremely, extremely helpful, um, you know, to, to do this exercise um, and, and really put things into perspective for you. 
And, um, you know, and if you're not willing to do a simple exercise like this, you might not be willing to do some other things to, uh, to start a business. So. Well, you're exactly right. And I know Jennifer does a great job in her business because what, you know, because once you learn that, then you can start using that same formula for making ongoing business decisions. I know Jennifer, you went through, you know, through uh, this, this year, just some, you know, remodeling and different investments that you're considering making. And, you know, and that's what you did, right? I mean, you basically, you know, you, you weighed out what, what the cost was versus benefits. Well, I'm sitting here thinking, I can't wait to get home later on tonight and use this exercise. I don't think um, we ever really sat down and this is the first time I'm like going through the motions with you and writing this down. This is, this is exciting for me to actually have like a outline of what I should be asking myself. But yeah, and I think um, with our last speaker, she said something about reinvesting um, the rate that you grow. Yes. And, and I think that that's, that's all relative. I mean, you know, we're coming up on year five in, inside the salon. And I know I keep saying it to you, dad, is there's some things that, that I really want to do. You know, when, when we first opened J Faith Hair Studio, we were working with, you know, a certain amount of financials. And um, so we did what we had to do, but the goal never changed. And so working hard over the last four years to build financials to say, okay, this is really what I wanted from the beginning, but we kind of settled on something that made more sense financially, but this was still always the goal. It never changed. So now that we have more money, <laughs> then now I can go ahead and, and put things in and do things a little bit differently that I always wanted to do from the beginning. So I think that's a good piece of advice is maybe the goal can't happen right now. And it's good to um, be aware of that, of where I am in my life. It can't happen right now, but that doesn't mean it can't ever happen. So what are the goals or what are the steps that we can take now to um, make that happen in the near future? Yeah, excellent, excellent point. So I want to pause this right here so we can go ahead and take a couple minutes to hear from our sponsor. Dempsey Weiss & Associates is a multi-line insurance agency successfully meeting the insurance and financial needs of the landscaping, business contractor, and agricultural community in southern New Jersey and southeastern Pennsylvania since 1989. To learn more, visit us at www.dempseyweiss.com. J Faith Hair Studio, centrally located in southern New Jersey. J Faith Hair Studio is the place to go to become the best version of yourself. Confidence in your appearance is always important, and a great hairstyle is an absolute necessity. Visit jfaithhairstudio.com to book your appointment today. All right, and we're back. And so we were, we were just talking about the importance of this, I don't know, is it four or six steps, Jack? What do we do? Is it, is it a, it's a five steps, five. Okay, it's a five step it's process. It's day one, it's not four or six, it's five. <laughs> yes, it's a five step uh, process. To I want to pick up on what Jen was saying there because you know I think <clears throat> a process like this is also very important you know, when you, your business gets moving and maybe you have some goals or objectives or things that you want to do that you weren't able to do in the beginning because you didn't have the resources. Now you have the resource. I think there's still a caution that you want to put up there. You still want to go through a process of, again, what is it, you know, that you're wanting to do? Why are you wanting to do it? What's the benefits and what's the cost? You know, it should, you should never spend money just because you have it. Um, you know, you might look at something and say, you know, I would really like to do this or add this. Um, and you're looking at the, you know, the financial statements and, and we have the money to do it. But there's still, you know, you still have to make good investments, you know, and some things 
are still not going to work out no matter what kind of process. But I would just encourage everybody who's listening that's at that point where they're wanting to do something, they've got the money to do it, just again, weigh it out. What's the benefits? What's the cost? What's the why? And weigh them out um, because it shouldn't be, I got the money, I'm just going to do it. Yeah, well, as you say that, I remember back when we were, you know, designing the salon and I told you, I really want an office, like closed door office. And dad, you were like, we need to focus on profit centers. Like an office is not making us any money. I know that's what you want, but with the space that we have and the money that we have right now, that would just not be a smart investment from, from the beginning. So again, just that idea of, I still want an office. <laughs> That's still a goal. It can't happen in the space that we're currently in now, but that doesn't mean, listen, when I get an office one day with a closed door, I'm going to be, I'm going to be very excited because that's just been a, been a goal. I'm in a break room and I'm trying to focus on work and you got stylists coming in and out, getting beer, getting wine, eating their lunch. You know, it can be very distracting. So one of my goals has always been to have my own office. So Getting beer and getting wine. I know, right? You think it's selling? Um, oh, well, getting it listen, the- come to J Faith Hair Studio and relax. We offer beer and serve wine and water and coffee. and. Right. We do not condone on site. <laughs> Only one drink employees. per client, no drinking and driving. Okay. And no employee drinking, but, but yeah, I think that's, that's a crucial, uh, you know, when you said, you know, you can even use this, this process for ongoing decisions. Um, you know, I know some things that, I, that we're doing in, in, in my nonprofit life, um, you know, it's, it, we're really, you know, we're going through this process and maybe more formal way through like a strategic plan, but, um, but you know, you kind of go through some of these goals and right now it's, you know, I'm saying, you know what, like, that's a great, like, that is the ultimate goal, you know, something that we need to work towards, but right now we don't have the right board to support it. You know, we don't, you know, traditionally our, our board members have done poorly in this particular area. And so, you know, right now, like, yes, we need to, we do need to pursue the goal, but there's work that needs to be done to get there. We need, you know, we need to recruit. We need to bring on more board members. We need to revise, um, you know, board member responsibilities and have everyone on board as far as, you know, what it really takes to make this organization work and what their input and responsibilities need to be. And so to Jennifer's point, you know, again, there can be the ultimate goal, but going through the process of, we're still going to get there, but, here's the there's the ultimate things that we have to get done and i think using you know a um you know a five-step process like this um you know can get you the same effects as you know uh, even maybe doing a a a super formal strategic plan so i think that that's what's great about this is because i think already as i'm doing it in my mind i think what this outline is going to teach us is that if we have a goal inside our business, it's going to show us that maybe we need smaller goals to reach the bigger goal, right? Like, okay, this is the goal, but wait a minute, I'm way, way, way far behind to getting to this goal. So I need to actually hit goal one, two, and three to get to the ultimate goal. And using this, this outline will help us do that a lot easier. Absolutely. And sometimes recognizing that we have to make those smaller goals, um, you know, again, I'm thinking in my nonprofit life that, you know, creating those smaller goals um, right now are because we have neglected pursuing some of these smaller goals earlier. One of our podcast guests had said, you know, something that she wished she had done sooner was to go through those growing pains and releasing things, you know, uh, of responsibility sooner. And I'm just, you know, again, I'm thinking, you know, there's some things along the way that we should have done sooner, but they were going to be growing pains. And um, it was easier to focus on some of these more exciting goals and getting them accomplished and checking them off on the list and, and whatnot. And because we've, you know, kind of neglected some areas of our, of our goals, 
it's now ultimately holding us back in in the pursuit of where we really need to be um where we really need to be at so, so good steps good steps. yeah up. right and that's exactly right and i you know and there's just um you know when you have a process and i guess that's what this really ends up being is a process to kind of walk through again it can be you know kind of the <clears throat> the bigger picture of a business or a goal it can be walking through again those smaller steps as you said you know we have this we have a big goal that we want to hit as a in our nonprofit but then as you start to percolate it down you're realizing well we've got some steps that we need to take down here at this level to position ourselves to hit that big goal and then and even that level, then you need to say, okay, well, we need to increase our board size or we need to do these things with our board. Well, same thing. What's the cost? What's the benefit? Because, you know, you can just say that and start doing things. And then when things start to go a little sideways on you and next thing you know, you wake up and it didn't, it didn't get done, you know, but if you sat there and say, all right, we can anticipate there's going to be a cost here. Um, and here's what it is. Then when it happens, nobody's sitting there like, oh, we didn't realize that. Or, you know, we thought that might happen, but, you know, it just kind of crossed our mind. No, it, it was down. We got it right here that these, these are the potential costs. So nobody's surprised. Let's work through them. And you're more likely going to stay the course, you know, if you take the time to go through, you know, through that cost versus benefit, which is, really you know the title of this podcast that that cost versus benefit analysis or benefits versus cost i like it better that way <laughs> stuff, good stuff uh jen any final comments thoughts yeah as we're talking about this i'm thinking about um back to our guests that we've had or you know entrepreneurs that you talk to and it always comes up, why, why be an entrepreneur? And most of the time, people talk about freedom, right? Not being locked into a nine to five. But what is so funny about that is when you start a business, no matter what kind of business it is, you have no freedom. We, there's a term that we use in the salon, handcuffed to that building. Now, maybe one handcuff has come off so far, but I still have one, one handcuff to that building. I think a, a lot of entrepreneurs want to know when starting a business, when does that time freedom start to happen? It's really going to depend a lot on how you approach the business because the other thing that you know, many of our guests have said is that you, know, you can only take your business so far. And so... You know, and maybe that's fine. Maybe you can say, you know what, I'm, I'm just looking to get, a, you know, I want to be a, a, an entrepreneur that's going to have a business that's going to produce $100,000 of income. I don't have to scale it. I don't have to add a bunch of employees to get there. And so, you know, and that's fine. But if you're really wanting to scale it to another level, realizing I'm not going to be able to take it there on my own. Then again, you come back go through your steps saying, all right, I need to start building a team around me. Um, that's going to be able to take some of those things away so that, you know, there's a point. Yeah, I can, I can walk away from the business and the business is fine. It's, it's going to, it's going to run. It's going to do what it needs to do but you've got to really understand what those steps are. And the sooner you get there or in the sewer, the sooner that you start building that, the better. And the sooner you'll, you'll get to that, that point in your business where you get the handcuffs come off. Cool. And we're going to hold you to that. No. Well, like in Jennifer's case, you know, again, what, you know, identify what, you know, what's keeping that handcuff on you, you know, let's identify what, you know, what are those two or three things that's keeping you there and then you start to say, okay, what do I need to start doing now to get this other handcuff off? Maybe it's cross training some of the talent you have in the salon to say, you know what, I, you know, 
I can, I can have this person do this particular function. You know, I would pay them to do that because again, you know, time freedom and all that, you know, there's a, there's a cost to that. Um, so you begin, you know, maybe it's, you know, maybe you've got to outsource some things, you know, and say, all right, I'm just going to pay an outsource to do some of that. But, you know, you have to really identify what those things are and then figure out, you know, what kind of investments do you need to start making in order to live handcuff free someday right. you know, as an entrepreneur and as a business owner. Good I think stuff. that's a trait of being an entrepreneur is you're a little bit of a control freak. I know I've heard that from, from people before, or maybe it's, you know, you don't trust people with your, with your business, which I can see feeling that way, you know, the first few years. And then, you know, you start to work through that a little bit and start to realize that people, people do, you hire the right people. They do care about your business. I don't know, Jack, were you ever a control freak like that? I feel like you were not. Me or Jack? Jack. Oh. Jennifer, you're definitely a control freak, but I mean, I just feel like for as long as I can remember, you were like, I don't like doing that or I'm not good at that. I need to be over here doing this. So I'm going to hire this person or this team and you guys run with it. I mean, I just, I don't ever really remember a time in, in business where, you know, in those type of categories, you, you know, were really ever a control freak. I mean, I can remember being at, uh, in Galveston and you were um, doing a breakout session on, I don't know, office structure or time management or something and um, a, a woman agent asked, you know, how do you manage your schedule with people making appointments for you? And you were like, you know, how much, how much do people have control over your, over your schedule? And you were like, 100%. I mean, if the time is there, then you, then you schedule it. And she was like, oh, what? And he's like, it, yeah, it just, you know, you go through my, my assistant, my secretary, or, you know, if you can't get with me, but you get things in the book and you make the appointments. And I just remember like just a shock of like, you give someone control over making your schedule essentially. Um, so oh, you're right. I don't, I don't think I would ever be classified as a control freak at all, you know, because I, you know, when people do ask us about our business model and how we've been able to do what we have done, I mean, I'm, again, it's, it's all through other people. I mean, I just happen to be the one that people talk to about it, but it's all through other people. And, and you're right. You know, I've always said that anytime I begin to do something that is, I feel is not in my sweet spot, or not important for me to be doing, I need to hire that away. And, you know, and what's been the unintended consequence of that on a very good side is I've brought people into the organization that, you know, for that particular reason, because I needed someone to handle that, or I found someone to, within the organization that could do that better than me. But ultimately what I found was, is you begin to develop people and then as other opportunities show up unexpectedly, guess what? You're prepared to, to step into that opportunity. Um, many times people say, well, we want to do this like you got. And I'll say, well, you know, you need people around you. And then all of a sudden it's like they do it and then they go to try to hire the people to help them. And it just never seems to work out. So what I say is just develop people. Can be in a continuous development of people in your business. And then when the opportunity arises, you're ready for it. You don't have to go figure out how to hire into that opportunity because that's a very difficult approach to take. So, you know, so yeah, I'm not. I wouldn't say control freak and um, and but right now, as we said here today, I also have you know, five people with close to 25 years with me and probably another five or more with 20 years and another five or more over 15 years. So we got quite the team here with a lot of experience, a lot of backgrounds. I still can't figure out how to get a day off though. I'm still doing something wrong, but 
something tells me it's kind of my own choosing there, but I could be wrong. Jack, any final thoughts before we go ahead and wrap this first episode of season two up? I love entrepreneurship. Same. What do you think, Jen? Same. <laughs> Ditto. Same to the third power. What'd you say, Jack? I said the same to the third power. We all love entrepreneurship to the third power. To the third power. So that, ladies and gents, we want to say thank you to each and every single one of our listeners. We ask that you please share us, share our episodes on all your social media platforms. That really is a wonderful way that you can support us. Please go ahead and like this episode. That really does tell us that these are the type of topics that you like to hear. And please leave your comments below. We want to know what type of conversation do you want to hear? What topics do you want us to to delve into. Uh, we really want to meet you guys where you are. And so until we can all be together again, please be kind to each other, be kind to yourself, and we'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye. Ba-da-ba! We want to thank you for listening today. Please subscribe so you never miss an episode. Leave us a positive review. And we want to say thank you to our sponsors, Dempsey Weiss & Associates and J Faith Hair Studio.